to have such a wonderful gathering today and uh, very special that we have uh, Kathleen Whitehead joining us on the piano. So show her how well we can really sing this song. We'd like <laughs> to start with uh, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. She'll play the first time through and then we'll sing all five verses. Hey. 
like to welcome everyone to the regular service of Nelson Unitarian Spiritual Center, which today is our belonging ceremony. And I have been asked to introduce the members of our executive board who have each helped to ensure the success of this service. The, I am Anne Farrell Webb, Chair of the Executive Board, and I arrange the chairing of our monthly executive meetings, send a weekly newsletter, over 300 names, and um, to those who have come, come into our service. And, um, we also have Tuesday evening sessions, and um, this idea was given to us by Michael Daly, who noticed that we sometimes had topics by our speakers on Sundays which were concerned with exercise or diet, and he thought these subjects would be better suited to another time rather than our re regular service. And uh, then he discovered that there was an opening on Tuesday evenings here at the Senior Center. Our vice chair is Michael Daly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and he has agreed to be our temporary secretary as well as our after our secretary had resigned. He has taken many help, been very helpful in taking over this position, obtaining all the documents and papers we needed, as well as com composing a letter from the board to tell our former secretary, Ray Stuthers, how much we miss him and appreciated what he accomplished for us. We're very, very thankful for all the extra time and effort Michael has spent for us, as he is a very busy city councillor and attends many meetings. We have a very dedicated treasurer, who is Karen, stand up, Karen. <laughs> Karen Mansfield, and we appreciate her ability to keep our books balanced and in order. And uh, she also sends the name and topic of the next speaker to our newspaper for our Friday edition on the church page. Our directors are Keith Wiley. who has willingly taken on the secretary's positions at times when Michael was unable to attend our board meetings. We discovered <coughs> that he has talent in printmaking and he readily agreed to design and create our membership invitation documents as well as the covers and pages of the books that are on the table for our members and friends to sign. We are thankful and grateful to him. Our next director is Ali John, and uh, with John, who attends our meetings as well. They are a musical team, bringing both music and storytelling to our services. As well, we are pleased when Ali recently graduated from the textile program at the Kootenai School of Art and presented us with our banner, which he designed and constructed, especially for us. Thank you, Ali. Then we appreciate having Marsha, who is, let everybody know, Marsha. Brandy and her husband, Dale Norman, 
on the board who bring their prior knowledge as Unitarian members and help us with difficult decisions. We thank you, Marcia, for the, bringing the flowers today. Yeah. And um, they have both taken long, um, months long positions as service leaders. Dale is also helping with the finances and has been able to successfully get our microphone system operating again. <laughs> Thank you. Other directors are Joy Green. <laughs> and um, she looks after the um, sending cards to those who um, cannot be here. Sympathy cards. And um, she's been a faithful attendee to our meetings. Claire Beck did enough. Thank you. And uh, we know who you are. Thank you, Claire. She helps with the ordering supplies. And um, we would like to acknowledge those who have supported us by being here 10 years or more. Beverly Jacinas. Thank you for coming. Michael Kraft is not here today. Roy Plummer. And then Dan Nelson. And um, we've been re receiving cards of congratulations which are on the table, which i uh, like you to have a look before you leave. Now I'm going to ask Michael to introduce our guests. It's been a long time getting here. It's a special day. And many hands have gone to uh, have added to the work of getting us here, and not the least of which is Anne, who's uh, held this space for over 20 years for us to be here today. <laughs> Just a quick thank you as well to Pacific North UU Development Fund, who uh, provided funding for uh, for Unitarians to support our congregation. They have an uh, emerging Unitarian Communities Fund and, and they were very supportive in getting us the help that we needed. I want to thank them. We are also uh, fortunate to have Joan Carolyn with us. And Joan is the Congregational Development Staff Person for the uh, Canadian Unitarian Council covering BC and Western Canada, and she comes from Winnipeg today. Thank you. We also have Milton Orst, who is the Canadian Unitarian Council board member, and uh, uh, he's responsible for the BC uh, of, uh, district or area, and, uh, and he comes to us today from uh, the Okanagan, so thanks, Milton, for being here. And a big thanks really has to go to uh, uh, Beacon Unitarian uh, Congregation in New Westminster. Okay. Um, so Beacon Unitarian uh, is, a, is a, in New Westminster and, and uh, when we asked for some direction from the Unitarians, uh, they looked around and uh, the, unit, the Beacon Unitarian Group stood up and said, yes, we want to support uh, Nelson becoming a, a Unitarian congregation, an emerging congregation. And they were willing to share their minister, Reverend Deb Thorne, who's made a couple of trips here, and is going to be presiding over our uh, service today. So I, without further ado, uh, pass the service over to Reverend Deb Thorne. Thank you very much. Let us move into a time of centeredness and worship together. May we be reminded here 
of our highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gifts of love and service to the altar of humanity. May we know once again that we are not isolated beings, but connected through miracle and mystery to the universe, to this community, and to each other. Let us light our chalice. Okay, may this light we now kindle inspire us to use our powers to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to bless and not curse, to serve you, Spirit of Freedom. to us about a particular joy or concern that you have at this time and I joy joy we're not doing the, the community we're doing a community joy and concern today oh. not individual joys and concerns because oh. we simply don't have time <laughs> okay a community oh okay yeah, yeah I and Dale and you Dale will you uh, well, speak up on I'll, I'll, I'll share a joy joy yes so a community joy and concern so just two candles we're going to light to cover everyone's joys and concerns today. So each of you light one of those. Okay. Are we just light? Yes. So Joy, why don't you light on behalf of all the concerns and sorrows that might be in this room today that we hold in our hearts and light a candle on all our behalf. Okay, this is for everyone who has joys and concerns. One joy. One size joy. One joy or concern. And I will light this candle. And this is for all of her concerns that remain unspoken, allowed, but are felt dearly in our hearts. Thank you very much. So the purpose of our ceremony this morning is well known by everyone who is here, but let me speak it formally. We are here to witness and affirm the formation of a Unitarian community. This is but one moment in the life of this particular community, a significant moment to be sure, but this community has been unfolding for over 20 years. Today we're marking a decision that was made and in formation for just over two years. Today we come together to put names to paper that become those people who become members or active friends of the community that is already known and will be known as of today as the Nelson Unitarian Spiritual Center. Some of you became Unitarians many years ago in a variety of Unitarian and Unitarian Universalist congregations. Some of you are here today stepping into this identity for the first time. Some of you are here this morning to support through friendship and understanding the community that forms. And finally, all of us are here to witness this event. So let us begin with the story of how the Unitarian Universalist Spiritual Center came to be. And? And Karen? I'm going to stand over here. I think I'll stand 
During my research about um, how we got started, I discovered that this history goes back 40 years. <laughs> wow. As I was married 39 years this year and attended some of these meetings a couple of years before. I was attending weekly members we held in each other's homes at the very beginning. We read books such as The Life of Edgar Casey and discussed them. I remember we sat in a circle and at the end we would hold hands and each repeat into the light I place in the person to my right. This went on for a couple of years. Then I heard about a young couple who had a number of BCR tapes and you service. And we met in their homes to watch and discuss these tapes. We had heard of the Unity Church because the mother and father of one of our members belonged to it before coming to Nelson and used to tell us about going to Hawaii and attending services there. After this, Two of our members, who were both high school teachers, had attended unity service in Spokane, and a group of us drove there for their Easter service one year. After this, we invited two of the unity ministers to come to Nelson to speak. We rented a room at the People's Hotel, which is now the Best Western Hotel and had about 10 different services with these two ministers who were Scott Sherwin and David McClure. Also, David had a weekly radio program for 15 minutes to which we were able to listen. We still have some of his tapes. <laughs> After this, we decided we could afford to rent space for regular Sunday morning services and first entered, rented a room at the library when it was located at Civic Center. We took turns finding a speaker and had from 10 to 15 in attendance. After a couple of years, we changed our location to the Senior Center and called ourselves Unity Fellowship. At this time, we were unhappy because of the smoke which drifted up from the basement rooms of the Alcoholic Anonymous group. <laughs> and when we heard we could rent the broader horizon rooms at Gordon Road, Gordon Road, we moved there. It was larger and had a number of large cupboards which we were able to use at no extra charge. We were at this location for approximately six to eight years, when one day, just before Christmas, we received a phone call asking us to move and giving us two days' notice. We did complain about this unfair treatment and eventually received a refund for the month of December. We obtained several large plastic tubs from Walmart which was filled with our books and supplies, and they were moved to my basement. We didn't know quite what to do, but I knew the president of the senior center who used to come to our, some of our early unity meetings and phoned her asking if there were any possibility we could come back. She said she thought it would be fine and that they didn't have anyone else on Sunday morning, but she would have to ask her executive board. And in the meantime, she said to use the space. So for a couple of Sundays, we just carried our, our little white candle and some books and supplies from my basement 
change began in July of 2014. A visiting minister from Unity Center held a service for us, followed by a workshop for the board. According to the minister, we were not following the five principles of unity, which was a surprise to all of us. However, it created a dialogue as to what needed to happen. Either get on board with unity or separate. So in October of the same year, uh, we held a meeting, uh, which was held for all Unity members in a private home. Fifteen people showed up, options were discussed, and a majority voted to separate. Uh, to separate meant a lot of work. Plus, we needed to change our name, register with uh, Canada Pension, or Re Re Revenue Canada, to obtain a new charity number, for tax purposes. Our goal was to do this by December's end 2014. Not a reality. <laughs> no. So we could not afford to operate without our tax deductible donations. Uh, we realized then we had to keep our name and number until plans became concrete. So in March of 2015, we've been discussing this a lot. Uh, Ali Gom volunteered to investigate the Unitarian Universalist Association and a possible affiliate. Well, this led us to Beacon Unitarian Church in the West, and uh, we had numerous uh, Skype meetings with them and with uh, other Unitarians. Um, thank you very much. And um, then... Um, Well, all of the Unitarians were demonstrating a support and, uh, and our, in our endeavor to become Unitarian. So by the end of 2015, we had uh, agreed our new name would be Nelson Unitarian Spiritual Center. In the meantime, our secretary, Ray, was doing extensive research uh, regarding our charity status. Uh, the good news was he learned that we were able to register our new name but keep the same number. Unfortunately, our status had been revoked uh, due to a, an error by the tax lady. Therefore, Ray spent many, many more hours of research and phone calls and finally successfully reinstated our charitable status. So, on May 1st, 2014, we officially opened our doors as Nelson Unitarian Spiritual Center, everyone welcome. And that is our history. Thank you. Thank you. Ali and John? Uh, 
Please use the word good. <laughs> I just can't move as much, but whatever. I, I'm going to ask for some help with this story. But before I do that, I'm going to tell you this is a story. It's a from the, let me pronounce it correctly, Snohomish, mm -hmm. the Snohomish uh, tribe. And uh, they're in the, in, the, in the northwest here. And uh, this is a, one of their creation stories. And it's called Pushing Up the Sky. So a long, long, long time ago, Creator began creating this land. Started in the east where the sun rises. Started in the east where the sun rises and began creating trees and lakes and rivers and animals and, and people. And each time people were created, Creator gave them a language. And then he gave these people another language and another language all the way across so we got just about to the ocean and thought, wow, this is beautiful here. I think I'm finished. This is great. But I have so many languages left. Oh well we'll just we'll just give them to everybody here, all these peoples, and that's why there are so many languages in this area, in this northwest area, there are dozens of languages. But you know everybody was happy with the way creation was. They loved the trees, the rocks, the, the animals, the fish, the birds. Oh, delighted. Except for one thing. And everyone agreed. The sky was too low. I mean, if you were as tall as I was, you'd go bumping your head into it. You know? And sometimes, even though it was forbidden, people would climb up into trees and go into the sky world. And so, they figured something had to be done. So the wise ones of all the tribes said, we have to do something. And said, well, how can we do anything? We can't even speak the same language. We all talk differently. You know, we, how are we gonna do this? And the wise one says, well, we'll figure this out. And so they, they got together, all the wise people of all the villages, and they said, well, we've got to do something, and I think I know what to do. I said, well, we can lift the sky. Well, how are we going to lift the sky? I said, we can do it. I'm certain we can. But we all have to do it together at the same time. Not just the people. The animals, the birds, anyone who can has got to push that sky up. And he said, well, how are we going to do that? Poles. We can get, look at these tall pine trees we've got here. We can take these poles and we can push up the sky. We all do it at the exact same time. <laughs> and there is one word, Yahoo. That means we all live together. And all, that means the same in all of our languages. Isn't that interesting? Yahoo. Let's, let's hear. Can we make that sound? Yahoo. Would you, all right, and, and have you all got your sky poles ready? I mean, the poles to push up the sky. Make sure you've got them. Everyone got your pole? Because we're going to push, and we all have to push at the same time. And our, we got the birds pushing, and the animals are pushing. They're helping you with your poles. And all right, so the wise people all together said, Yah. And the sky went up a few inches. They thought, let's do that again. Yah. human sphere means there is a recognition 
of common experience, common knowledge, or common vision. We belong to many, and many belong to us. There is the family of birth, birth of cult, the culture of birth, the country of birth, the faith of birth. In these cases, there's not necessarily a choice made. Belonging here is a process, an envelopment of living into an acceptance. There's another type of belonging that comes when one recognizes something in oneself that is met or reflected back from an outside people or group. In our growth, through the process of self-knowledge, we, we come to understand that we have a worldview, a value system, ethical system, a belief system. And how wonderful that we can find and choose to associate with others whose principles align with ours. In my early 20s, I was on a spiritual journey. And Sunday mornings, I would go to a grove of trees in a park in Vancouver. And I would sit and commune with the trees and connect with what I called the universe until a sense of communion had been opened between myself and the universe. And then I would go for a walk around the city and listen to my intuition in conversation with the universe. One day I was walking down 49th Avenue in Vancouver towards the west, towards Oak Street. And as I neared that corner, my intuition said, go into that building there, the door's open. So I went into this building. There was a whole group of people in the sanctuary. I sat in the corner in the back, and I looked at this building, and it had so many elements of nature and a balance between nature and the human and the human and the elements and beauty. And that spoke to me, and I listened to this per person speaking, and I didn't re I can't tell you what they were talking about. What I noticed was this balance between heart and mind that was very appealing. And then I had this moment when I can only describe a sense that my heart cracked open. And there was this complete knowing that was both in my body and my heart and my mind that I found my home. And I was weeping. And then I discovered this was the Unitarian Church of Vancouver. And then I went about finding out what it stood for. And I realized that what it stood for was where I had arrived in my life. So some of us get to choose our home. Sometimes the home chooses us. Some of you may have had a similar experience. There are, of course, those of... Some people have grown up in UU communities. My daughters are, are two lucky children to have grown up in the Unitarian tradition. But at some point, they also decided whether they wanted to belong to this tradition. Let me risk defining to you, telling you what I think belonging to a Unitarian tradition means. Unitarians believe in religious freedom religious, the expression of religious freedom. So we are encouraged to explore a spectrum of beliefs, but to also do the harder work, what is naming what is true for each one of us. And because we believe in religious freedom, it's also, I believe, our duty to protect the religious freedom of others. Unitarians believe that ultimate authority resides in the individual, and when the individual comes together with other individuals, that authority rests in the community. We believe that we are part of nature, the part of the interdependent web of all existence. We believe in the unity of experience, that there is a core interrelatedness sense of being a human being. We believe in the worth and the dignity of every human being. And many of us would add to this every creature and every expression of nature. We believe in the ethical application of our values, 
which means we walk our talk with integrity. We believe in the force of love and the power and strength of compassion to build bridges between divisions, to seek understanding, and the spiritual maturity comes as we face our limitations and therefore deepen our relations. We believe in the necessity of democracy and that all voices have a place at the table, no matter how small or how soft. We believe in the importance of a religious community to provide witness to our experience, accountability to our actions, and as the connective tissue for our interdependence. This is what I think it means to live and belong to Unitarianism. And what does it mean to belong to a Unitarian center or a Unitarian congregation? Above, well, all of the above, together, by a commitment to showing up, as Joan spoke about yesterday. Show up when you are asked, when one sees the role, the job, the opportunity that needs filling. Let's be, be clear here. It takes work to be a center, to be a community. There are decisions that need to be made, there are services to prepare, and there are people that need to be loved. It also means that when we fall out with someone, when we misspeak or misstep or fail to live to the covenant we are making to affirm the principles in our life, we take responsibility for our actions and we ask for forgiveness. And when asked, we offer forgiveness. We don't leave the center, we make amends. We all fail sometimes, and some of us fail daily. And to think otherwise, I think, is arrogance. We are vulnerable, we are fallible, we are human. We belong to this community, and belonging to this community requires a commitment to staying in it, even when it means we have to grow and change to be courage, courageous and to be humble. A religious community is not joint. A Unitarian com community is co-created. We are all making it up as we go. We are creating together a human, diverse community. Becoming a member, stepping up as a friend, means saying yes to co-creation. Let us share a reading together that is in your order of service called Connections Are Made Slowly. It's actually on the back cover. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And this is, this is a, a lovely poem by Marge Piercy, an American writer whom you may know. Um, it's from our the, the big uh, Unitarian songbook. Uh, it's number 568. Um, I just want to note that when it says, I'll, I'll do the leader and you do the all. And there's a couple places where the all goes on a little longer. Keep going until you get the leader again. <laughs> so you've got a big part here. So, so uh, I, will, I will lead off. It's a beautiful poem. Connections are made slowly. Sometimes they grow underground. You cannot tell always by looking what is happening. More than half a tree is spread out in the soil under your feet. And then quietly as the earthworm that blows no trumpet. Fight persistently as the creeper that brings down the tree. Spread like the squash plant that overruns the garden. Gnaw in the dark and use the sun to make sugar. Weave real connections, create real nodes, build real houses. Live a life you can endure. Make love that is loving. Keep tangling and interweaving 
and taking more again, a thicket and bramble wilderness to the outside, but to us interconnected with rabbit runs and burrows and lairs. Live as if you like yourself, and it may happen. Reach out, keep, keep reaching out, out. Keep, keep bringing in this. <laughs> this is how we are going to live for a long time, not ours. For, for every gardener knows that after the digging, after the planting, after the long season of tending and growth, a harvest comes. my mind and lighten my heart and try to let go of attachments. Every other Friday, I am a Christian. I look for the least of these and try to love God and my neighbor. The full moon of the month finds me wicked. I honor the dual nature of God and find my rhythm as maiden, mother, or crone. On the 15th of the month, I am a humanist. I respect science, integrity, and fellow humans, and all that we have learned and have made. Every fourth Wednesday, I am Hindu. I take a breath and understand that what is unfinished now will remain for me to continue next life. On alternate Fridays, I am Jewish. Yavarakha Adonai. Vishmericha, I tell my children, softly touching each head. And the Thursdays and the Mondays and the Saturdays and the Sundays and all the other days in between find me reading or listening or watching. Philosophers, Muslims, Mormon, Baha'i and more fill my heart, touch my soul. And yet, the one thing that none of these provide to me is the certitude that they are the one. They lend me wisdom, <coughs> sing to my heart, cause me to question, help me find answers, make me more me. And at the end of the day, every day, I am a Unitarian Universalist in parcel and in pledge. And with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind and all my strength, I honor this faith and hold it close as it lets me run free. And this is a poem by Joanna Fontaine Crawford. I believe that that poem describes what it means to be a Unitarian Universalist better than any essay or homily or sermon that I could give. So now, this is the moment. Those of you who are here today not only to co-create a Unitarian community, but are here today to recognize that what Unitarianism stands for is the path on which you find yourself today. If you are choosing to covenant to affirm the Unitarian principles for the first time today, would you please stand near the table at the front? For the first time today? For the first time, I'm going to continue on here. And if there's anyone here who would like to reaffirm 
their covenant, please step forward as well. How wonderful for us and how wonderful for you that we stand here together in this moment to recognize our journeys and where they bring us to this moment. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you to listen to it the first time. There'll be a pause and then I'll read it again. And if you agree with this statement, I invite you to respond, I do. But we're having a pause in a moment so that you can be thoughtful about responding. The question, do you find yourself in alignment with the intent of the seven principles of this living, evolving tradition and promise to one another your mutual trust and support? Do you find yourself in alignment with the intent of the seven principles of this living, evolving tradition and promise to one another your mutual trust and support? If so, please respond, I do. I do. And one more question. And I ask this to all Unitarians in this room as it's a good reminder to all of us. Recognizing that we are fallible human beings and that we will fail from time to time to live up to our covenant, do you promise to forgive yourselves and each other and to start again? And if so, please respond, I do. Thank you. You may sit for the moment. There are many happy days in the life of a congregation, and this is one of them. And it gives me great pleasure this morning to acknowledge those of you who are taking the step into the circle of the Nelson Unitarian Spiritual Center to become members in co-creating a community that will be a center for religious freedom, ethical values, social justice, and spiritual deepening in the Nelson area. There are many ways to formally and informally associate yourself with the Unitarian community. Each person finds the relationship that best suits his or her situation. Membership is one way. Membership in this community is both simple and complex. It's simple because all that is required is to sign the membership book this morning and agree to the definition of membership as you have written it in your bylaws. But membership in this and other Unitarian communities is more complex because that simple act of signing the membership book carries with it a multifaceted meaning. It means that you're linking yourself with a diverse community of individuals who acknowledge that they do not have all the answers and are committed to the path of seeking them. and who strive to live in loving and respectful relationship with each other. To live with awareness and choice is a significant responsibility. To live in covenant with others requires commitment, and at times, that largesse of forgiveness. To live from an expansive and deeply embracing love is the challenge, I would say the ultimate challenge, in each of our lives. This community affirms that we must be respectful and accepting of each other in our varied understandings of the religious life and that we will take responsibility, both personally and cor corporately, for the life we lead and for the world that we live in. For those of you who are stepping into membership of the Nelson Unitarian Spiritual Center, would you please now step forward? And we are a center, we are a circle. So if we can create a circle, if you can create a circle. Your current bylaw states, members of the center shall endeavor to live in accord with the vision 
principles, and sources of wisdom consistent with Unitarianism. They shall further the work of the center through active interest, love, and support. Active members are those who participate in worship, prayers, classes, and or giving during the fiscal year. Now I will ask you a question, and if you agree to it, please respond, I do. Do you who have stepped into the center of this community freely accept the duties and responsibilities of membership and commit to working together to co-create the Nelson Unitarian Spiritual Center? And if so, please respond, I do. I do. Thank you. May you find here what you seek in the support and the encouragement that this community and you each offer. And I also want to acknowledge right now that there are people who will be making their membership with this community who are not able to be with us this morning. And there will be a ceremony in the future to include them in membership. I invite this group to stay standing in the center and reach out a hand to those around you or place a hand on a shoulder if you're more comfortable with that, as I am now going to add another layer to this circle. If there are any in the room now who wish to step into the forming Unitarian community as active friends, to care for the members, to attend their events, to encourage its growth in the greater Nelson district, could you now please step forward and place a hand on those who stand in the membership circle? As you are able, from your seat is fine. There you go. I ask you now this question, those that are now standing. Will you too become co-creators, encouragers, and supporters for what the Unitarian Spiritual Center stands for? Will you show up when you are able, contribute what you can, and care for those who are connecting with this morning? And if you are in agreement with this, please respond now, I do. I do. <laughs> and if there is anyone else remaining, I encourage you to stand and connect to those in the center. For those who are family members, neighbors, representing other Unitarian communities, and friends from away, I ask you to stand behind that last circle and reach out and place a hand on someone in front of you. This is the moment a blessing. This is the moment. I invite everyone to breathe into your hearts and then on that next exhale allow the energy of your hearts and minds to travel through your hands through those to whom you are connected and continue to do so. Imagine the energy moving through the circles through every person in this room into the center, creating the center. We are forming the center now. And because we do not exist in a vacuum, because a thriving, growing community also needs to be open and welcoming to new ideas and new people, I ask that you take one of your hands and reach it away from the center with the palm high as you are comfortable with and open to symbolize the openness of this community to the wider community and to the world for learning, for growth, and for love. And let us pause in this moment and breathe together. Blessings on your co-creation, and may this community thrive with joyful celebration. So be it. Thank you. I invite you now to take your seats, and let us sing Spirit of Life, holding that center. <laughs> Thank you. 
really enable. Third, third stage. Sing it twice. Sign the book. There's another document here. I would ask that you come and sign. And you can come and be the first one, please. This is where we're going to have all the names on one piece of paper. We print and sign. Uh huh. We're going to need some help, Joan, with getting the things on. Thank <laughs> you. 
We're going to do one thing, or we're going to do two things at the same time as we're continuing to sign as members um, or friends. I'm going to invite Milton Norris to say a few words as representative of the Canadian Unitarian Council Board. Thank you, Deb. Um, now, when we were preparing the program, Deb gave me uh, permission to take the next 25 minutes. <laughs> she and I had a quick vote, and we unanimously agreed that I would shorten that considerably. <laughs> But I've uh, had the privilege, um, I've only been a member of the um, CUC, Canadian Unitarian Council, for um, less than a year. And this is the first time I've had the opportunity to part of the ceremony, and I'm very pleased that this was uh, able to happen, because Mike and I have been friends back to neighborhood Unitarian in Toronto. I just want to make a few comments about the relationship between you and the, the, the uh, CUC. I'm so excited for contribution I've been able to make or the attendance I've been able to have here. The thing that really strikes me is when we get together like this, we come together as a community with a lot of things that we have to pay attention to. Um, one of the famous Zen stories is about this man who came and asked for insight and uh, understanding. And so the monk invited him to sit down for some tea and uh, he uh, said, uh, didn't say anything, and the man said, well, um, can you help me understand, like I've come all this way to understand the meaning of spirituality and 
all of these things and he didn't answer. He said the same thing again and he didn't answer. And finally the man got really angry. He said, I've walked for hours and hours and back days to hear inspiration, understanding, and so on about spirituality. He said, be quiet. And then he got really angry. He said, be quiet. And the third time, the man became enlightened. And I think one of the things I wanted to say is, one of the things that we value so much in our CUC congregations and ability is um, growing understanding of the necessity of listening. The Canadian Unitarian Congress has the opportunity to reach across the whole country to more than 40 congregations or fellowships. And what is important about that is two things. One is that as a fellowship, you come together to listen, to learn, to share, to uh, contribute, and to develop each of you in your own way, but collectively, your spiritual understanding of the world that we live in, which is an amazing, amazing place. Unitarian community, as uh, many of you may already know, but didn't, don't, don't know now, originated from Hungary several centuries ago. The origination came from the king of Hungary, who said to all of the people who lived in his kingdom, do not abuse, do not mistreat, do not harm the other people of our country. They are all our friends. Make them so. And it happened. They had the, one of the most amazing understanding countries in the world at that time, back in the 1700s, I think it was. Until another uh, religious group came along and executed the king for his uh, beliefs, which they did not want to share. But it was a start, and many of us have gone back and found that. So we, we need to remember that. The other thing, one other thing I want to say is that we cannot let ourselves become um, silos. We have so much to give each other, but we have so much to give to those out there around us. The CUC is here in all of its membership to be as much help as we can to enable your fellowship to be as successful in so many spiritual ways as we can be. And we want you to share with us and have the same thing. We want you to be successful just as we want each other to be successful. So we come together with that really strong belief. I just want to say one other word. Uh, I don't know how many of you know the name Bada Hirschmanova. Yes. Okay, Bada Hirschmanova was Many of you won't. She became the leader of the um, Unitarian. You'll help me. Unitarian Service Committee. The Unitarian Service Committee, which I had donated and been involved in. She helped. She came from a European country here as after the war, and she had such a belief in how we could help the world change that that was her whole belief, and she did change the world in so many different countries. So. Uh, the thing that I find so important is the capacity and the desire and the action to reach out, not only to each other here, but to everyone who will benefit from the Unitarian philosophy and all those kinds of things. So let me finish with that, that um, this is a challenge to reach out to, um, not only to reach out, but to share with ourselves and with each other. That way, just like a lot of Hirschmanova did, we have the capacity to change the world. So that would be my final request of you. You have the capacity here, like Blotten did, and so many others of us have already made that contribution to change the world. Don't lose that as part of your commitment to the Nelson Fellowship and Canadian Unitarian uh, Congress. We also we have much to share, much to achieve. So thank you. Now what I want to do is, um, the right hand of friendship. And then I'm going to go around and shake everybody's hand. I'm sorry, fellowship, yeah. And I don't have a disease or anything, so it's okay. <laughs> so if you could just go around and we will shake hands. And then as we finish, I would like you to shake, reach out and shake hands with at least one other person. Because the shaking of the hand each time that it happens can be for each of us a gift to the person whose hand we're shaking. They'd like to be better. May we be able to serve each other. May we grow spiritually and personally and make this a much better world because that is what we're here to do. Thank you. May I add something to this? Change the world with love.
Change the world with love and in a positive direction. Right. <laughs> as, okay, you, so. as you are doing that, I'm going to ask Joan to come forward and to read some messages. I'm sorry, I'm pushing this because we've got people at the door wanting to come in here. No, no, but they don't think it's an Okay, it's okay. They're not coming in, Marsha. It's okay. Okay, while you're shaking hands with each other and with Milton, I have special greetings for you from, first of all, from Keith Wilkinson, who is the president of the Canadian Unitarian Council Board. As the 48th congregation of Unitarian Universalists in Canada, he welcomes you to our national community. He says that we hope you will be inspired by our shared vision, a future in which our interdependence calls us to love and justice, and join with us to fulfill across Canada our aspirations to be deeply connected, radically inclusive, actively engaged, theologically alive, and spiritually grounded. We hope you will join us at the Wilderness Camp on Kootenay Lake in the summers. Drop into any of our congregations when you're traveling in Canada, especially those nearest you in Kelowna, Kamloops, Calgary, Surrey, and Vancouver, and work with us in generous spirit to advance the many social, economic, and environmental justice issues affecting our planet. We are so pleased to be walking with you. I'm only going to read one more, and this is from Vita Ng, the Executive Director for the Canadian Unitarian Council. Welcome to a faith tradition which draws wisdom from Jewish, Christian, humanist, and the world's religions. Welcome to a faith community which is, which is inspired to confront inequity with compassion and which invites you to come together in love and justice. Welcome to a faith tradition which believes that it is not who or what you believe in that is important, but rather how you live your life. Welcome to our Canadian Unitarian Universalist family. We, the CUC staff, covenant to walk this journey with you. The covenant is a powerful way to be in right relation with each other, to clarify expectations and to build trust. We commit to listening to you, to working with you to find solutions, and to be present in both joyful and challenging times. We offer this blessing to you. May your spiritual home be a place of happiness for all who enter. A place where the old, the young, and the in-between are renewed in each other's company. A place for growing, a place for music, a place for laughter, a place where those who are searching find comfort, where those who are lost find their path, where those who, those who are sad find meaning. May your spiritual home be kept safe. May it always resound, hum, and shine with both joy and serious intent. May all of you respect this place as the home of your spirits and bodies where friendship, trust, and integrity matter deeply. May the rain and snow fall lightly on this spiritual house. The sun shine warmly, the winds blow softly, and bless it as a place of peace. Those words from Vida Ng. I also have... A card with more greetings. I had to make it big. And I still ran out of room. So please feel free during our social to read the rest of the greetings. And I invite everyone. Michael, I'll let you speak to that and then invite everyone to the. Yeah, are you going to do closing? Yeah. No, I. Can you do that after then? I just wanted to make sure that we do pass the basket around. Today. Oh, okay. Okay. Please join me for the closing words that are inside your order of service. You read 
the all part. <laughs> Our closing words. We have gathered together this morning with intention, with hope, and with joy. We all. Coming as we do from many different beliefs, different life experiences, different cultures, and different points of view, we revel in this human diversity. We all. Drawn together, seeking true, authentic connection through heart, mind, and spirit. We all. Committed in affirming principles and drawing wisdom from many sources. We belong. To share the moments of our lives, the joys and the sorrows, the doubts and the insights. We belong. To celebrate the spectrum of human experience. We belong. And to explore all the known and unknown mysteries of our human existence. Amen. We extinguish this flame. But not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we gather again. Thank you, Reverend Thorne. Just uh, one announcement is all I'm going to make. And that is that we are meeting, our social is over at the co-op. And uh, on the upper level in the cafe, so you go through, walk over there, through the store and up into the cafe, we have an area um, put aside for us, uh, set aside for us. And it's, I think, appropriate that we're taking our celebration into the community. So I'm at, we're expecting us about 20 minutes ago, so uh, don't worry about the chairs. Well, a few of us will stay back and get them put away. Grab your coats and we'll see you over there. We'll help you over there. I have one. I have oh, okay. Yes. Hi. Next Sunday, the 29th, we are having uh, Agnes, his last name I can't remember right now, um, who will be talking to us about the goddess and the work that she has done in her new book about the goddess in history. And here it is. Okay, I have one more comment to make, and we've got to join together in this. I'm here to welcome the 48th congregation of Canadian Unitarians. Today is 48. <laughs> there is a, a that little Thank you. I really appreciate that. They go in that. Uh, That's one that I've planned to come to. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I